Second reading. The member for right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I rise to speak on the Treasury Legislation Amendment Unclaimed Money and Other Measures Bill for 2012. And so, yet again, this government is embarking on another desperate and despicable cash grab of the people of Australia's hard earned cash and future entitlements. Madam Speaker, one, one word comes to mind when we think of the process that has followed this bill into the House, and that's chaos. Madam, um, Madam, um, Mr Speaker, this government has abused the process of which the manner and the timing of which this bill was introduced into the parliament. It is imperative that there is sufficient time to understand the impact and potential consequences that this legislation may have on Australians, on the people of right who I represent, who have unclaimed money in accounts that this bill specifically targets. I have no hesitation <coughs> in opposing this bill, together with my colleagues, uh, coalition colleagues, I cannot, Mr Speaker, I cannot support this bill based on the haste in which this government is moving to act on this particular bill. For the first part of the bill makes an amendment to the Banking Act of 1959 to provide a new arrangement for unclaimed monies held by the Australian Deposit Taking Institution. It was introduced last month at the same time the Coalition was receiving its very brief from st uh, on this bill from staff and the Treasury from the Treasury's office. And despite seeking to have this bill referred to the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Corporations and Financial Services, the bill was listed for the debate the following day. And why, may I ask, because of the desperate search for funds that this Treasury needs in its process of cooking the books. It seems as if it's a desperate scramble not that dissimilar to when, uh, when, when we've got a poverty-stricken household looking to find coins down the back of the couch to, uh, to put a meal on the table. I wanted to share with you with reference to why the government is pursuing this bill. And it goes to the heart of debt and it goes to the heart of this government's capacity to manage its fiscal affairs. When we talk about debt, since Edward Barton, since Edward Barton, our first Prime Minister in 1901 through to 2007, if you were to add up all of the deficits since 1901 to 2007, it had come to $123 billion. Since Labor's come to office and on its five-year anniversary since 2007 to date, they have accumulated deficits in excess of $172 billion, more than, than the $123 accumulated by the entire parliament here in Australia. The current debt figure today is $252.9 billion, and borrowings over the last 22 weeks have been in the vicinity of $19 billion. And this being the last sitting week for 2012, it's only more obvious that this government is going to do everything it can to rush through whatever they can through the House, including this bill. I really don't know whether to laugh or to be worried more by the fact that the debate of the bill was adjourned shortly after it was introduced by the government when it realised that it didn't have the support of the member of Lynn, nor the member for, uh, for Melbourne, for support of this actual bill. The bill before the House seeks to enact various changes to unclaimed money measures which were flagged in the government's 2012-2013 MyEFO and makes amendments to the Banking Act of 1959, First Home Saver Accounts Act of 2008, the Life Insurance Act of 1995 and the Superannuation Unclaimed Money and Lost Members Act of 1999, the Australian Securities Investments Commission Act of 2001 and the Corporations Act of 2001. Specifically, these amendments will will impact arrangements relating to the transfer of unclaimed monies to the Australian Securities and Investment Commission for bank accounts and life insurance policies, lost members' accounts to the Australian Taxation Office for superannuation and unclaimed monies for companies' monies. The bill effectively brings forward the time in which money is recognised under the relevant law as lost or unclaimed, which will in turn have an effect of moving approximately around $700 million into the 2012-2013 fiscal year. $700 million of Australians' money, which is going to be used uh, on the balance sheet as if it's a government asset. Well, it won't be. It will still be the property of the Australian people as unclaimed money. Uh, but it's, it's, an, it's an element of accounting trickery, which this government has reduced itself to in order to try and maintain a way for things surplus. These changes will reduce the period before an amount payable by an Australian deposit-taking institution is treated as unclaimed monies from seven years to three. This change has potential wide, 
bred unintended consequences for many Australians. And this government should not be allowed to get away with ad hoc actions that have such a diverse impact on society. And so today I'm clear what this bill does. An Australian worker who has money sitting in the bank account and perhaps has decided to venture overseas and, or choose to leave money in that account accumulating interest, doesn't make, if he doesn't make any further deposits or withdrawals for that period of time, well, they'll have their deposit treated after that three-year mark as unclaimed monies. These funds will be moved to the government's own account, known as the Consolidated Revenue Fund. And, Mr Speaker, it's a terrible, terrible result for many Australians with untouched funds in their bank accounts. So the unintended consequence, the unintended consequence of this bill, and I say this with my hand to the heart without any political rhetoric, is that the unintended consequence is that we will potentially have Australians, elderly Australians, younger Australians, rather than being encouraged to save and to put money into the bank accounts, the real potential is they're just going to take their money out of the, out of the banks and not use the safety net of the banks and go back to the old ways when they had no traditional security in the banking sector and put it in a Milo tin under the bed or bury it in the backyard. And before I go any further, I want to bring to this parliament's attention the important task we of members of the parliament have when discussing legislation like this, because we have not had time to discuss the unintended consequences of this bill. And as the member for right, it's my as a member of the right of this parliament, I'm constantly reminded that we need to ensure uh, and work hard towards ensuring the people of right will benefit from a better life and a higher standards of living through a high, higher productivity uh, with it throughout the economy. But I can't help thinking of the bureaucratic nightmare those who will encounter this poorly thought out administrative change will face. And to highlight the administrative of nightmare, I mean, I took the opportunity um, when reading this bill to go onto the Australian Taxation Office website and download the, uh, the unclaimed superannuations money non-lodgement advice, because I thought it would have been just an easy, an easy job of picking the phone up and saying, you know, I'm back in the country or I, I, I want to try and transfer this over. Nothing short of seven, seven pages, seven pages of, 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 of uh, information and data to fill out. But the one that got me, the part, of the, the part of the download was the type of superannuation or the provider, and you could only select one to be made. And you had to nominate your superannuation account, whether or not it fell under the categories of retirement savings account, two, industry or award superannuation fund, three, employer sponsored or corporation, a corporate superannuation fund, four, public offer or retail superannuation fund, a small Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority fund an exempt public sector scheme, a public sector fund or an eligible rollover fund, or if you didn't have anything that plugged into any one of those, you could touch, tack other. So if someone's got an amount of, say, around two grand sitting in there, it's not unfeasible that someone could spend nearly up to two grand with accountants or with lawyers, their own solicitors, trying to work out which one of those categories they fell into, simply to have that, those funds returned. I cannot, um, the next part of this bill amends the First Home Saver Accounts Act of 2008 to provide new arrange for arrangements for unclaimed monies held by the First Home Saver Account providers. The new law amends Section 17A and 15C of the uh, FHSA Act to change the unclaimed money period from seven years to three, similar to the, the amendment before. The government announces the introduction of the First Home Saver Accounts in the 2008-2009 budget. As many members of the House will be aware, the first homeowner save accounts is a relatively new measure, with many parents having established these accounts for their kids. And it was a good idea. But have not been able to make contributions in recent times, particularly with rising cost of living, not to mention the impost of the carbon tax. But this amendment will mean that some of these, some of these accounts will be at risk of being claimed by the government. So if mum and dad hasn't, you know, who was trying to save money to put it into a deposit for a deposit account for their kids, if they haven't had the opportunity over the last couple of years because they're finding it tough or dad had lost his job, um, that'll just get sucked into the vacuum. What this amendment will mean is that some of these accounts will be at risk of being claimed by the government, particularly where holders of these accounts have not been able to afford to contrib contribute to their deposits over the past three years and have not been in contact with their bank, which holds their deposit. It is obvious from the plain and simple fact that, the bill, that this bill uh, and then the government is out of touch with the people of Australia. Out of touch because, now, because they know, not to mention my constituents of 
out of touch because they're not to mention, not to mention the constituents of right. I can only imagine the response I would get next time I walk through Bow Desert or Boona, Grantham, Mount Tambourine or Mudgeribar in my electorate to speak to some of those constituents who are potentially going to lose their, their funds. Why this government has not sent this bill to the parliamentary inquiry lends itself to question what are the members of this Labor government trying to achieve? And do they fully understand the potential implications on all Australians? I can only hope that their constituents are informed enough to make the right decisions at the next election. Schedule 3 of this bill amends the Life Insurance Act of 1995 to provide for new arrangements for unclaimed life insurance monies. Life insurance companies within the meaning of uh, the Life Insurance Act are currently required to report on any pay unclaimed monies to the Commonwealth. This new arrangement will reduce for a period of life insurance monies are treated as unclaimed monies again from the seven to, to three year period. It is not, how, it's not clear how these provisions will apply to contemporary life insurance products or policies because the government has not had time to properly develop the legislation. And it would be nothing short of unacceptable if I didn't say that it's yet another reason why this parliamentary scrutiny of this bill is required. And what happens to a policy of a deceased person? What happens to a policy of a deceased person is it then up to uh, is it then up to the public trustee office then where uh, for them to go and search for unclaimed monies uh, over that three year which fall into that three year bracket? I suggest that uh, there won't be a great amount of motivation as as a consequence. Um, um, life insurance policies will not be inactive if, if a family member wasn't aware that there was one there. The final part of this bill that I speak to today amends the superannuation unclaimed money and lost members act of 1999. The amendment changes arrangements for the transfer of lost members accounts to the Commissioner of Taxation and to provide the payment on interest of unclaimed superannuation monies. Uh, quite simply, what this means is that lost superannuation accounts with balances of less than two grand, two thousand uh, dollars, that will have that have up until now been inactive for only three years, and accounts for unidentifiable members which have been active for twelve months, will now be required to be paid to the tax office. So the majority of the, the amendments move from seven to three. This particular one on cash moves from three years to twelve months. Um, Madam Speaker, the coalition. Sex accepts the justification on the increase of the threshold from $200 for small account balances to $2,000. So they're increasing the threshold from $200 to $2,000, and that is around the level which the account erosion becomes less likely. Uh, however, this tenfold, increase to the, this tenfold increase to the threshold makes it much more critical that existing problems in the current regulations are resolved. So that increase in the, from the 200 to 2,000, you will hear members from the, from the government side saying, "Oh, they would have lost, they would have lost their money anyway if we didn't take it. It would have been eroded with uh, uh, charges, bank charges, and fees." Well, once it gets to the $2,000 mark, the interest-bearing component on a $2,000 well and truly offsets. So that will not be an argument or a debate that can be used against this particular measure. Many of these problems did not appear to have been considered while producing the bill. Uh, but will now be in real need of, of readdress. Mr. Speaker, I confer with my colleagues in recommending that the amendments to the Schedule 4 of the bill be delayed until 31st of December 2013 to address the critical issue raised since the announcement of the measures and align the timing of their implementation with that of the auto consolidation process under the Superstream reforms due on the 1st of January on 2014. Mr Speaker, it is with disappointment that I speak on this bill and say, and I say this because I know the people of right and the silent majority of the people of my electorate that I represent have not been treated fairly in the due process that they so desperately deserve. But I am convinced that by speaking on this bill, the people of right can be assured that I am trying to do everything I can to ensure their personal savings. It is clear that the rush timelines and implementation of this bill have been driven by nothing more than a desperate government trying to pretend that it can deliver a surplus, the surplus that in fact generated through increased revenues from this particular bill. If this bill doesn't get up, the surplus is at, at, uh, at, um, at risk. Furthermore, I'm convinced that I have never seen a bill so blatantly that impedes on the life of Australian people, uh, my people of right, and it's so direct contradiction to the integrity and the trust of this parliament and that, that we're all trusted to hold on to. Um, 
I cannot emphasise enough the need to exercise caution in making changes to this Act, and I confer with my colleague, coalition colleagues in not supporting will not facilitate a government that is acting on self-interest as opposed to properly considering public expired. policy. I call the member for Hughes.